Hello. And welcome to Django Under the Hood. I am super excited to be here. We have got 300 awesome people in this room. Congratulations to all of you for making it here. I am gonna just introduce the conference and do a bunch of um, important housekeeping things to start with, and then we shall crack on hopefully fairly soon with the exciting program. Um, to start with, if anybody has not yet found the Wi-Fi, it is under the hood, and the password is under the motocap. I apologize for my Dutch accent. <laughs> There are posters with this around if you can't work out how to spell Dutch. Once you've found the internet, which I understand is a little flaky, but we're working on it, um, please use the hashtag D-U-T-H on Twitter. And when you're talking about it, also use our official conference emoji, <laughs> which is, of course, the sparkles. For those people who are unfortunate enough to not be able to be here, we do have a live stream of the conference for the first time this year, as provided by the wonderful John at the top. Um, this is available on YouTube, or alternatively, you can go to djangounderthehood.com slash live, and that will be much easier to find. I would like to thank now all of these wonderful people. These are your organizing team. You will probably have encountered several of them already. We are identifiable by our red lanyards through the conference. If you need anything, please talk to one of them. Probably not me, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> we have a photography policy, so those of us with red lanyards are organizers. You will hopefully be aware of this from registration. If you have a blue lanyard, that means that you're okay to have people take photographs of you. However, if you see someone with a yellow lanyard, please refrain from taking and publishing photos of that person as they don't wish to have that done. Similarly, we have a code of conduct in place. This is available on the website at djangounderthehood.com slash coc. If you have any problems with anything, no matter how minor or otherwise you think they might be, please do talk to us. We have these five wonderful people. There are posters around with some phone numbers on and the details are on the website as well. If you have something you wish to report, please do report it and we will deal with it appropriately. We will probably also be publishing a document after the conference with the details of what has happened for full exposure. We've got sprints on Saturday and Sunday. Can I have a quick show of hands so we know how much food we need to buy? Who's planning on coming? Basically everyone. Great. I'm very happy about that. We're gonna do some great things. We've got a whole extra day of sprints this year compared to the previous years, so good stuff. On the desk outside, is a feedback box. This is your opportunity to tell us all of the wonderful things that we're doing and all of the things that we're doing not wonderfully. Based on last year's feedback, we're going to just do a little segment here to introduce some of the Django team and the wider Django community. One of the things we do with this conference is that all of the members of the Django team are invited to come to the conference and we try to make sure that this is the one time in the year that we all get together to talk about the future of Django and where we're going. It has been a previous criticism that this group of people tend to not spend very much time with anybody else and just talk to each other all the time. So we're actively trying this year to be outward looking and to have as many conversations with as many of you as we can. So the first thing we'll do is I'll get everybody up to in sort of introduce themselves, say hi, say who they are, say what they do and what they're interested in and what they'd like to talk to you about. So if I can invite any members of the Django core team in the audience to come up onto the stage for the moment. <laughs> Gonna need a bigger stage. <laughs> Hopefully not too low. 
So we're just going to go through everybody very quickly, and then I'd just like everyone to introduce who are you, what's your name, what do you know about, what are you interested to talk to people about. So we're going to start with the people who've been here the longest. <laughs> I'm only the second longest, Adrian's, Adrian's the old man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jacob Kaplan-Moss. Um, I have uh, been involved in Django since the beginning. Um, Adrian hired me to come work with him at the Lawrence Journal World uh, about a year before Django was open sourced. Um, I, what am I, I'm, I can talk broadly about almost everything that's gone on in Django, but not deeply about almost any of it, because I tend not to be uh, deeply involved these days. Uh, I work for the US government. I'd love to talk to people about that. We're trying to make the government, the government do IT better, which is fascinating and awesome. And I'd love to meet people, especially who work for other governments. I think that would be so cool. So if any of you do tech for government or other civic institutions, I would love to talk to you. Hey, everybody. I'm Adrian Holvati. I've been doing Django stuff since the beginning. Uh, and I live here in Amsterdam. So I'd love to talk to you about any historical stuff if you have questions on why things are bad. Uh, and uh, looking forward, I'm really interested in offline stuff. So if you've done any work with offline uh, service workers, that kind of thing, that's something that I would like to add as a first class thing in Django, or maybe a second class thing. Uh, and also separately, would love to talk about music and being an expat uh, and having a five-year-old kid. Stop on this end. Just pass it down. Um, hi, I'm you probably know me as Funky Bob, and that's the name on the card, so that's, <laughs> that'll do. Um, yeah, I, I know lots about lots of parts of uh, Django, except the ORM. I'm too scared of that bit. Uh, <laughs> I've been working on it for 10 years now, I think, and helping out on the IRC channel for most of that time. Um, yeah, happy to talk about just about anything. Uh, hi, I'm Tobias McNulty. I've uh, been using Django for... Uh, about nine years now, I'm the newest member to the core team, uh, but uh, probably my largest contribution was the contribute messages framework. Um, I don't even remember what version of Django that arrived in, but many, many years ago. <laughs> um, and uh, a lot of other people went into that, but that's probably the, I sort of championed it through and may know a little bit about that, but these days I'm more focused on um, training and helping new people get into using and developing Django. Um, and I guess I should mention Cactus Group too, which is a company where I work and help found in uh, North Carolina. We do all uh, Django development. So it's been a big part of what we do and uh, Django is something I love through and through and would love to talk to many of you about. Um, hi, I'm Daniele Procida. I have been working with Django for a few years. I work with Divio. Uh, I'm a Django CMS developer. I'm probably easily the least useful programmer on the core team and possibly in this entire room. But it doesn't matter. It means you can come and talk to me about anything and you need not feel bad about starting from the beginning because that's where you all, we all start from. So uh, come and talk to me about that or about uh, anything else you do with Django. I'll be very happy to talk to you. Uh, I'm James Bennett, possibly better known as Ubernostrum. I started using Django pretty soon after it was released. Then Jacob made the mistake of hiring me to work with him at the journal world. And then I made the mistake of volunteering to help with packaging up the releases and somehow ended up doing that for a few years. And then we, we paid Tim to do it and he does a much better job. <laughs> um, really interested in security um, also in sort of the future of Django as a, as, as what was the phrase, standard library of the web, uh, which is, is a thing that I care about quite a lot. Uh, I'll plug my company, uh, Clover. We're trying to make the U.S. health system not be awful. It's, it's up there with making government do IT better. So <laughs> if, you, if you want to talk about that, come find me. I have business cards. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm on stage after this, so I'll keep it very short. But if you want to come talk to me about networking, about channels, or about systems architecture, I'm happy to talk about that and many other things. Um, and the rest of it you'll hear in a, a little bit. So. I'm Tim Graham. I'm contracted full-time by the Django Software Foundation uh, to basically shepherd Django development. So I review most of the pull requests 
and uh, shepherd the releases. I'm Carl Meyer. I've um, been using Django since about 2007, I think. And um, I like to talk about testing, clean architecture. These days, I think a lot about scaling code quality to large development teams. So I'd love to talk about that or anything else, really. Hi, I'm Josh. I um, work for Kogan.com, um, an online retailer. A little bit of a plug. Um, I work with the ORM mostly, and uh, more recently, the Expressions API. So if you want to talk about the ORM, if Funky Bob doesn't feel comfortable doing that, I do. So I'm one of the few people here that probably can speak about the ORM these days. Uh, hey, I'm Florian. I'm known as Apollo 13 on IRC. Uh, I'm using Django since like 10 years and try to help out on the IRC channels. If you have uh, any really, really weird bugs that are bugging you since ages and you just want another set of eyes, I'll happily help out there and also if there's anything security or infrastructure related. Hi, I'm Russell Keith McGee, uh, Freakboy3742. Uh, I've been... <laughs> <laughs> Not 31. Uh, I'm the, um, I've been a member of the core team for oh, coming up on 12 years now. Um, so I'm probably the third oldest representative of the core team here. Um, so I've been around. I was DSF president until the end of last year. Um, Frank took over um, at the start of this year. Um, I, my interests now are mostly in uh, getting Python and Django running on other interesting platforms. So Python on mobile, Python on set-top boxes, Python on your phone, on your watch. Um, and there's a booth over in the far corner that um, is populated with bees. Uh, so come and have a chat if you're if you're interested. <laughs> come and have a, come and come and talk about the bees. I'm also interested in bees and Australian animals that may or may not kill you. So uh, come and talk to me about that if you want. Hi, I'm Ola, and uh, if you want to talk about uh, diversity and Django girls, uh, then come to talk to me, if you can find me, and I'm not very busy running the conference. <laughs> um, also, if you want to talk about ORM, or uh, if you are very bored with Django and you want to talk about Elixir, uh, which is so awesome, <laughs> um, then come and find me. and. Uh, also, if you're interested maybe to learn something about running Django at Google App Engine, you can grab me. I'm not an expert, but I know something. So, uh, yeah, that's me. I am Simon Charret, uh, known as Charret on uh, RRC and GitHub. I'm currently working for uh, Zapier. And, um, yeah, so I'm interested in working uh, with the ORM, uh, migrations and uh, testing infrastructure in Django. Um, hello, I'm Emeric, Emeric Augustin in French. Um, I'm part of, let's say, the third wave of Django core developers. I've been a core developer for about uh, five years. Um, I have touched many, many parts of Django. I have strong opinions about everything, but you can make me, <laughs> you can easily make me change my mind. Uh, and uh, things I've written three years ago in the in the ticket tracker may not be uh, still true today. Uh, so, <laughs> willing to uh, to discuss and, and reconsider just about everything. <laughs> Hi, I'm Idan, and uh, I'm giving Daniele a, runny, a run for his money when it comes to the most useless core developer. Um, <laughs> it's, it's true. Uh, like, with numbers, true. Um, uh, so I'm a designer developer hybrid, and I don't really do a lot of Django anymore. Don't throw tomatoes at me. Uh, I do a lot of JavaScript. I work at Heroku. Uh, I'm interested in data visualization and um, working with data and how to make that less painful. So talk with me if that's your thing. Hi, uh, I'm Loic. You might know me as Loic84 on IRC. Um, I work mostly with uh, forms and the ORM, and tomorrow I will be talking about uh, validation in Django. And uh, I work in the humanitarian sector, uh, WFP. Hi, I'm Marcus, Marcus H on IRC. I've took over pretty much Andrew's migration part after the 1.7 release. Care about migrations, security, deployment. There's a bunch of, bunch of stuff I'm happy, about, happy to talk about. Hi, I'm Karen. Um, I used to contribute a whole lot more to Django many years ago in the 1.0, 1.1. 
one time frame, and then I got a full-time job working with Django, and I live in hope that I will one day find time to contribute more again. Uh, I, <laughs> I always hope. Um, Alex, is, I'm willing to talk about anything. I really enjoy helping people learn things. Um, and outside of work in Django, I do cat rescue, so if you're interested in talking cats, I can do that too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tomek. Uh, I care mostly about the community and making Django a nice place for everyone. So here am I, here am I uh, organizing, helping to organize this conference along with Ola and uh, other people. So, uh, and Mark and Anya, well, uh, anyway, uh, that's what I care mostly about. So if you want to talk about uh, inclusive events uh, and community, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Frank Wiles. Uh, I'm the current DSF president, and so if you want to talk about anything about the foundation or with fundraising or anything like that, um, I also specialize in like performance and scalability. So if you're interested in making things go fast uh, or businessy consulting kind of stuff, uh, come talk to me. Hi, I'm Michael Manfrey. I'm pretty much known for doing the database backend stuff as one of the people that uses SQL Server and runs Django on Windows. So if you want to talk to me about any of that stuff. Cool, I also kind of know the ARM pretty well, so that's me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Christie. I work full-time on Django REST Framework. Come and talk to me about anything to do with web APIs. And I guess to complete the set, hi, I'm Mark Tamlin. Um, I, my biggest contribution to Django is Contrib Postgres. Um, I have a strong interest in the ORM. Um, I'm currently mostly eyeing up forms and maybe the admin, and I have some really crazy, stupid, big ideas. So if you want to know how ridiculous those are, you can come and talk to me about those. Thank you very much, everyone. On Saturday, we will be putting on a set of dinners, or well, I say we, really, that lot of people you just saw will be putting on a set of dinners in the middle of the sprints on Saturday. If you go to djangounderthehood.com slash dinners, you'll be able to sign up for one of these. The idea is that we get two of these people that we've just been talking about, or, or some of the organizers of the conference, and a number of other people, and we book a restaurant together, and we go and talk about stuff. So there's a set of restaurants and talk, and um, people and topics, or starting topics, realistically. Um, if you're interested in doing that, go and sign up for these dinners, and hopefully we will see a lot of you there. I'm going to crack through this a little bit because we're running slightly late. Um, but I would particularly, we have a number of things that we really need, people who we really need to thank. Um, I would start off with the Dutch Django Foundation, and in particular, Yuri Becker, who acts as a treasurer for the foundation. He has handled all of the financial concerns for this conference with great speed and efficiency, which has been extremely helpful. A conference like this cannot be put on without sponsorship. I won't tell you what our budget is, because I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's lots, so we say. Um, and in particular, I'd like to thank these companies. Our largest sponsor for this conference is a company called Sonoma. They are one of the largest Dutch media publishing companies. They have a booth outside. If you would like to talk about that and you have an interest in them, I'm sure they will be delighted to see you. I also believe they have free hats. There are also so many people here that they don't even fit on one slide. All of these wonderful companies who I'm not going to read out now have contributed to the financial backing of this conference. They are, we are extremely grateful for everything that all of them do, and to all of these ones as well. <laughs> Tomorrow, we will have a, having a social evening uh, at 8.30 p.m. at a place where I'm not going to pretend to pronounce. This this event has been made possible by the sponsorship of Sentry, who hopefully you will all be familiar with. There are some t-shirts for them outside. They do um, tracking of errors. If you haven't investigated them, they're great. I use them. And finally, I would like to thank Potato and all of the various people who have put this stage installation and so on together. It is a ludicrous amount of work. Um, 
and makes the conference really rather special. So thank you very much to everyone involved with that at Potato. Okay, so that's pretty much me done now when it comes to introductions. The final, so we can finally crack on with some talks. Questions. For those of you who have not been to Django Under the Hood before, firstly, hi, welcome, nice to see you. Secondly, you will notice that our talk slots are very long and very vague in their abstracts. We choose a bunch of topics, we choose a bunch of speakers, and we invite them to come and talk about this stuff, and we give them a lot of time to go really deep. We don't cover many topics. We've got nine talks over the course of the conference, vastly fewer than, say, a Django Con Europe, but we try to make sure that we can go as far into those talks as possible. If you start to feel like you're getting a little bit lost or the talk is getting hard, that's fine. You will not be the only person in the room who is feeling that way. I get lost quite regularly. In fact, I make them all tell me their talks beforehand so I have some hope of understanding what they're talking about. We don't do questions in the traditional format where you would come up to a microphone and ask questions. There will be a Slack channel in the main Slack for each of the talks, which we will open at the beginning of each talk. If you wish to ask a question, please post that question in the Slack channel. If you like some of the other questions that are there, please add little thumbs up icons under each question so I can see which questions are popular. At the end of the talk, we will have a sort of conversation, I like to think of it as like chat show style, but that's probably me get, getting carried away, with the speaker with me, and I will present those questions to the speaker and we'll have a conversation about them. Any questions which cannot be asked because we run out of time, the speakers will hopefully be able to go into the Slack channel, catch up with those questions and respond there. We're going to leave those channels open for the rest of the conference and the sprints afterwards. So anything exciting that comes up from that particular talk, we use a place to continue to go to talk there, to go to talk about it, to go and talk about sprint ideas that you want to do for it and so on. I have a one request. During the talk and for a sensible period of time afterwards, please do not ask, answer anybody else's question. These are questions for the speakers, not an open platform for you to show off how much you know. I would also remind everybody that a question has a question mark at the end and is not a statement. It needs to actually be a question. If anybody does not have access to Slack or hasn't worked out how to get there, I mean, we have internet issues, but we'll do our best. Um, if you don't have access to that, if you send an email to hello at djangounderthehood.com, then you will get an invite back promptly. Hopefully, most people have been on the Slack already. It's been really great. So, one of my responsibilities with this conference is to establish the schedule of talks as work out who's going to talk about what. So, some months ago, I started asking people, what would you like to see talks on at Django Under the Hood? This seemed like a really great idea. I'd get loads of good ideas, and I could compile a long list, and then we could cut it down and choose which talks we want to have. Unfortunately, 95% of people all said the same thing. And what they said was, channels, please. So, didn't really have any options. Your wish is our command. So I am delighted to welcome back Andrew Godwin to Django Under the Hood. He's probably best known for his, invol his long involvement with the migrations framework, both through South many years ago and now Django Migrations. If you want to know more about the internals of migrations, you can find a video from two years ago where Andrew first spoke at Django Under the Hood. But migrations are kind of solved now, for some <laughs> definition of solved. <laughs> They're solved enough that Andrew got bored and wanted to do something else. <laughs> now, Andrew doesn't like easy problems, so we decided to go for, yeah, let's make, just make Django async as a small, tar, small problem to look at. So to explain roughly how this was possible and something about channels, please welcome Andrew Godwin. <laughs> 